Good evening, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Daily Motion. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Wednesday, January 28th, 2015, around 8.06 p.m. It's cold out right now. We had a nice sunny day. Tomorrow's going to be another nice sunny day, but some snow showers Friday morning and then Friday night and Saturday morning possibility of a backdoor snowstorm in the Merrimack Valley of Massachusetts up to New Hampshire and Vermont up to eight inches of snow possible. We'll wait and see if it develops. Some news to report the state of Wisconsin's giving the Milwaukee Bucks $220 million funding for a new arena to replace the Bradley Center. The new Milwaukee Bucks arena could be open by the year 2018 and there's rumors that the NHL might give Milwaukee a team contingent upon a new arena being built there. And also that's about it on news. And my third and final video blog subject of the night is my personal life profile. My personal life profile is about Hall of Fame pitcher Phil Negro. He is a He's one of the most famous knuckleball pitchers of all time. He was durable during his major league career. He pitched a lot of games, started a lot of games, and he pitched in the big leagues until he was 48 years old. Phil was born in Blaine, Ohio, and he grew up in Bridgeport, Ohio, and actually he was boyhood friends of Basketball Hall of Famer Number 17 from the Boston Celtics, John Havlicek, also known as Hondo. And Phil played baseball in high school as well. In fact, he developed the knuckleball by his father, who was a coal miner, who played um, semi-pro baseball on the side. And also his younger brother, Joe Nico, was a knuckleball pitcher as well, who pitched many years in the big leagues. And... Phil was signed by the Bra the Milwaukee Braves in 1959 for $250. That was a lot of money back then for a 20-year-old to sign, $250. And Phil spent six seasons in the minor leagues. He was both a starter and a reliever but he came out of the bullpen most of the time. He made his Major League debut for the Milwaukee Braves in, on April 15, 1964, and for the next three seasons, he split time between the minor leagues and the Braves, Milwaukee, and when they moved to Atlanta, he was coming out of the bullpen or starting back and forth, but um, Phil's breakthrough year was in 1967, when he went 11-9, and nine, he had 10 complete games, 9 shutouts, and a 1.87 ERA, which led the National League that year. And beginning in 1968, through the next several seasons, Phil became one of the most consistent starting pitchers in Major League Baseball. A durable start, starting pitcher as that. He would pitch many, many innings, maybe win many games, completing many games, but losing a lot of games. He was a good strikeout pitcher for a knuckleball pit for a knuckleballer, but he would walk a lot, give up a lot of hits, and give up a lot of home runs. But he had three 20-game um, winning seasons. Four times he led the NL in innings pitch. Usually sometimes he would pitch 300 innings in a season. You'll never see a Major League Baseball pitcher do that in this day and age. He started, um, he led the NL four times in games started. So usually sometimes he would, Phil would start 40 games a year. Never see that in Major League Baseball again from any starting pitcher because they only had four man rotations in the, in the 60s and 70s. Three times he led the National League in complete games which sometimes he would average between 15 to over 20 complete games a season. And when you throw a knuckleball pit, pitch, you, you don't strain your arm a lot, so he, he could stay in the games the whole nine innings. 1977, he led the National League in strikeouts. 
knucklebell pitches are not known for strikeouts. And five times he made the All-Star team. Three times, Phil finished in the top ten in NL Cy Young voting, peaking out in 1969 when he was second place. And he pitched a no-hitter for the Braves in 1973. And... Phil only made the postseason two times, 1969 and 1982. Phil pitched for some very, very bad Braves teams in the 70s. And Phil was basically the only star they had during that time period. And it got frustrating for him and stuff. He, he pitched for, for the Braves from 1964 through 1983. Then he signed with the New York Yankees for two seasons. He got his 300th victory um, with the New York Yankees. And strange thing, he did not use his famous knuckleball pitch at all into the final two strikes of the game. That's amazing. Final two pitches of the game, I mean. Then he played for the Cleveland Indians in 1986-1987. And then he played for the Blue Jays. He had one last hurrah. For the Atlanta Braves in 1987, he retired from baseball after that with a career record of 318 victories, 274 losses, a 3.35 ERA, which is pretty good for knuckleball pitchers. Sometimes knuckleball pitchers have ERAs over 4. And 716 games started. Amazing. 5,404 innings pitched. That's a lot of innings. 3,342 strikeouts. Amazing. 245 um, complete games. Another amazing stat. 45 shutouts and 29 saves. And Phil's number 35 was retired by the Atlanta Braves. And after his big league career ended, Phil was a, the manager of the all-ladies baseball team, the Colorado Silver Bullets, for a few years. And Phil appeared on the Hall of Fame ballot for the first time in 1993, but it took him five times to get voted into the Baseball Hall of Fame, which he got voted in in 1997. The reason why he, it took him five tries to get him into the Hall of Fame is that he was basically kind of a 500 pitcher. He never won a Cy Young Award, and some writers thought he got 300 victories because of longevity, and he was sticking around for that. But Phil was a very great pitcher, and if you get 300 games, you should be an automatic first ballot Hall of Famer no matter what. And Phil has taught the knuckleball to many pitchers, including Tim Wakefield and Tom Candiotti and others, and he is probably one of the greatest like pitchers in the from the late sixties through the early eighties. Phil Nequo, and his nickname's Nuxy, and that's about it on Phil Nequo. I love doing these video blogs, Facebook friends, and YouTube followers. Doing them three times a day. I'm now added Twitter and Daily Motion to the. To the mix for these videos so there's four places you could see it i'll be back tomorrow facebook friends and youtube followers three more video blogs first video blog will be about the 10 greatest baseball players in san diego padres history then the second video blog of the day will be about maybe a sports issue and the third and final video blog of the day will be about the classic TV detective series Barnaby Jones. And don't forget Facebook friends and YouTube followers. A few more days, I'm going to be previewing on my personality profiles through the month of February some famous African American people because it's at it's Black History Month in February. But I'll give you a head start on Saturday. Will be um, the personality profile of the first African American baseball player. In big league history, Jackie Roosevelt Robinson, that that the late Howard Cosell says that was that was the um, America's most greatest athlete they ever produced. Howard Cosell said that in an interview back in the late seventies. And don't forget, coming soon, there's definitely going to be a video blog on Julie Bratton and Heidi Pratt. Maybe, just maybe, I could get 
Julie Broughton or Heidi Lee Pratt for an interview on my video blogs. Good night.